America's Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gdibia Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the discussions held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the King of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein, noting the pivotal role of Jordan led by His Majesty King Abdullah in advancing peace efforts in the region and adhering to the interest of Arab nations, notably of Palestinians. The cabinet extended its thanks to the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture for their efforts and swift response to the recent heavy rainfalls. In this regard, His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Works to expedite the implementation of sustainable infrastructure solutions across the kingdom. This follows the cabinet review of a joint memorandum submitted by the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture and the Minister of Works. The cabinet discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding developments and the implementation of projects included in the Kingdom's general budget for the 2023 to 2024 fiscal year, which was agreed by the executive and legislative authorities. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the mechanisms and services provided by the company operating the Khalifa bin Salman port. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an agreement between the Customs Affairs of Bahrain's Ministry of Interior, the Egyptian Customs Authority and the Chinese Hong Kong Special Administrative Region regarding mutual recognition of the Authorized Economic Operator Program. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU for cooperation in the field of statistics between the Information and E-Government Authority and the General Authority for Statistics in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision establishing the rules and regulations for establishing honorary consulates in the Kingdom of Bahrain appointments and identification of headquarters. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to a proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior regarding the launch of the National Civil Protection Platform, which aims to raise awareness of public safety procedures as well as provide safety instructions and guidelines. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following ministerial reports. The official visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 34th meeting of the Council of Arab Ministers responsible for environment. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Parliamentary Municipal Council Conference of the 28th session of the Conference of the Parties COP28. The visit of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Minister of Hajj and Umrah to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 21st meeting of the GCC Housing Minister Committee. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Global Exhibition for Educational Solutions and Supplies, JESS.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed bin Salman Lim Salam and the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh at Gdaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's interest remains a main priority and forms Bahrain, a team Bahrain's efforts in furthering its comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad highlighted the importance of continued collaboration between the executive and legislative authorities and its pivotal role in serving the kingdom and its citizens. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the role of members of the legislative authority to achieve citizens' aspirations by developing the legislative system and supporting national work streams. In this regard, His Royal Highness noted the Kingdom's commitment to implementing development plans, programs and government services in cooperation with the legislative authority to benefit all. His Royal Highness outlined that the Kingdom's wide-ranging achievements continue to be attained through Team Bahrain's ongoing support and determination. His Royal Highness emphasized the Kingdom's support to Team Bahrain's efforts to further wide-ranging national achievements including security and stability, noting that Bahrain continues to prosper under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the unity of its citizens. For their part, the Speaker and the Shura Chairman expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his commitment to supporting cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities to achieve the Kingdom's desired goals and aspirations. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and several senior officials also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, made a statement on the occasion of the two-week anniversary of the launch of the Help Gaza campaign, organized by the National Committee for Supporting the Palestinians in Gaza. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the committee's efforts embody the support of His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, RHF, and his humanitarian initiatives towards brothers, which reflect the firm's stance toward the Palestinian cause. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his support to the campaign, affirming that the RHF is honored to implement His Majesty's directives. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his keenness on providing all the necessary support to various campaigns. His Highness affirmed Bahrain's support to the Palestinians in Gaza during their difficult humanitarian circumstances, stating that the committee continues to provide urgent humanitarian aid and implementation of the royal directives. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of the martyrs in eternal peace and wished the injured a speedy recovery. Believing in their just cause, and in sympathy with the catastrophic humanitarian conditions to which the Palestinian brothers are going through, the royal directives came since the beginning of the war in Gaza to provide relief and support to the brotherly Palestinian people to reflect the firm and clear position towards the just Palestinian cause and the great keenness and support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa towards the Palestinian people. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation formed a national committee to support the Palestinian people in Gaza, whose membership includes many ministries, government institutions, humanitarian and professional associations, in order to unify efforts and provide aid and assistance to the Palestinian people. After the formation of the committee, under the guidance of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a large national relief campaign was announced in which the people of Bahrain participated to support their brothers in Gaza. It collected $18,600,000 and received wide attention from the Ministry of Information, which harnessed all its artistic, administrative and technical capabilities to organize the campaign, and it allocated long television broadcast periods and received many guests and national relief and religious figures who supported the campaign's efforts and implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation intensified its efforts in partnership with various ministries and concerned authorities in short periods to prepare relief shipments urgently. It sent its first urgent shipment within two days of the launch of the campaign 
followed by the second shipment about 10 days later, and facilitated their delivery to the Palestinian people to extend a helping hand in light of the difficult humanitarian circumstances they are going through. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority GSA and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronized the conclusion of the Women's World Junior Sabre Fencing Championship in the presence of GSA CEO Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar, BOC Secretary General Faris Al Kohiji, and the Bahrain Fencing Association chairman Sheikh Ibrahim bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that Bahrain's hosting of the championship is in line with the reputation in organizing major sporting events. His Highness honored the top winning teams, Uzbekistan, Bulgaria and Kazakhstan respectively. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the hosting of the championship, which enhances Bahrain's status as a prominent destination for hosting sporting events in light of its remarkable organizational capabilities. His Highness congratulated the winners and wished the other team success in the upcoming championships. President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa participated in the Global Religious Leaders Summit for Climate that was held under the patronage of the President of the UAE, His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The summit was organized by the Muslim Council of Elders in collaboration with the United Nations Climate Change Conference and discussed the role of religious communities and institutions in addressing climate change and challenges. Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed praised UAE's efforts in supporting and advocating global humanitarian issues, affirming Bahrain's pride in the long-standing relations between the two countries, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. The SCIA president said that Global Summit was an important platform for exchanging ideas and expertise, as well as pioneering initiatives to engage religious leaders in advocating for climate issues. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the Regional Development Forum for Arab States organized by the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications in cooperation with the International Telecommunication Union and its Regional Office for Arab States. More in this report. In order to enhance the role of telecommunications and information technology as an essential sector for economic development, the Regional Development Forum for Arab States was launched, which discusses, over the course of three days, vital and major topics on the optimal methods for digital transformation and its role in keeping pace with various future developments. 
Several goals and serious steps were taken by the forum, which is being held in the Kingdom of Bahrain for the first time, with a number of topics that will be highlighted through an integrated agenda that will discuss the most important results of the World Telecommunication Development Conference and the most important developments regarding the regional initiatives for the Arab region that were adopted by the conference. During the forum, a special session was held for the Women's Network in the Arab region, which presented diverse and inspiring models of the International Telecommunication Union's work, in addition to creating opportunities for women in the telecommunication sector to communicate and exchange experiences. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Iman al Dosari, affirmed that the industrial sector is considered one of the promising sectors in the kingdom, which was embodied in the launch of an ambitious strategy to develop the industry as part of the economic recovery plan. More in this report. As part of its keenness to develop the industrial sector, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce held a meeting with the executive team of the Industrial Cooperation Committee with the aim of determining the priorities of the Gulf industrial system and the initiatives that would achieve industrial integration among the Arab Gulf countries. During the meeting, a number of topics were discussed to achieve the unified strategic goals of industrial development among the GCC countries to move the sector from empowerment to integration. The Ministry of Industry continues to work to achieve the objectives of the industry strategy, which is based on a number of foundations, such as supporting the industrial sector's adoption of fourth industrial revolution technologies to increase its productivity and efficiency, in addition to supporting investment in technological infrastructure and the digitization of manufacturing, promoting the concepts of the circular carbon economy and encouraging the sector to adopt environmental and social governance and increasing the efficiency of supply chains, by achieving industrial integration. The Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, received Parliamentary Strategic Thinking Bloc members. He praised the role and efforts of the Representatives Council and their patriotic stances that aim to ensure the safety of the country and its people. The meeting highlighted the role of the Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing General Directorate in implementing alternative sentencing and the Open Presence Program in addition to discussing a number of rehabilitation programs. The members expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the General Directorate for their efforts in rehabilitating beneficiaries in all areas. The Supreme Council for the Environment organized a youth trip for participants in the youth workshop on climate change to plant 100 mangrove seedlings in the southeast of Ma'amir coast with the aim of encouraging young people to engage in environmental culture and participating in increasing the green area in the Kingdom of Bahrain. More in this report. Within the program of the Supreme Council for the Environment and its keenness to spread environmental culture and enhancing the role of youth in protecting the environment and the climate, this youth trip came within the program of activities accompanying the Youth Workshop on Climate Change organized by the Council and the UAE Embassy to the Kingdom with the support of Al Baraka Islamic Bank and BIBF under the slogan Together for the Climate. We are here today with the Supreme Council for Environment uh, for the planting of mangroves. Uh, this event is an open event. The public have been invited for this event and it's a great initiative by the Supreme Council to educate the public for why mangroves need to be grown, why they are important for Bahrain and why they are important for our earth. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak bin Daina, affirmed that the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain are continuing in the project to quadruple mangrove trees until 2035 in compliance with the pledges announced by the Kingdom within the framework of national endeavors aimed at mitigating and adapting to the effects of climate change. We're here with about 20 students and four teachers supporting this wonderful initiative from the Supreme Council for the Environment. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here um, and hopefully it will still lead to a lot more things um, that we can work together with the students and the Supreme Council into the future. This initiative and national responsibility undertaken by Bahraini youth is a source of pride and contributions to protecting the environment and achieving sustainable development goals.
President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, has ordered the Joint Operations Command of the Ministry of Defense to initiate a Gallant Night 3, a humanitarian operation to support the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. His Highness instructed the Joint Operations Command to work in close collaboration with the Emirates Red Crescent, the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation, the Zayed a Charitable and Humanitarian Foundation, and other UAE institutions to provide humanitarian support to the Palestinian people impacted by the current conflict. He directed that doctors registered with the Ministry of Health and the Department of Health Abu Dhabi to be given access to volunteer. This also includes the Red Crescent and Emirati humanitarian and charitable institutions. Jordan's monarch, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein, said that Jordan's air force has dropped medical supplies by parachute into North Gaza for a hospital run by the kingdom's military. The Jordanian army have since 2009 operated a 40-bed hospital on the edge of Gaza City. The announcement by King Abdullah comes after the repeatedly call for international community to put pressure on Israel to allow uninterrupted aid into Gaza. Other Arab countries have also made delivering aid to the enclaved a priority. The Jordanian statement added that this step comes as a continuation of the kingdom's efforts to stand by its brothers in light of the war in the Gaza Strip. The United Arab Emirates and China have requested a closed-door meeting for the UN Security Council on the situation in the Gaza Strip. The UN Security Council will discuss in particular the strikes on the Palestinian refugee camp at Jabalia and the north of the Gaza Strip and a convoy of ambulances near the central Al Shifa Hospital. Last month, the UN Security Council failed to adopt any of the four draft resolutions on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The 10 non-permanent members of the UN Security Council are currently drafting their own document, which is expected to incorporate provisions from previous draft resolutions. The heads of the main United Nations agencies issued a rare joint statement expressing their anger at the increasing number of civilian casualties in the besieged Gaza Strip. They called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in the Israeli aggression on Gaza. The heads of 18 organizations, including UNICEF, the World Food Program, and the World Health Organization, expressed their regret over the number of casualties in the Israeli war on Gaza. In the statement by the heads of the UN agencies, it was stated that in Gaza, the entire population is under siege, an attack deprived from access to essential elements for survival, and the population is being shelled in their homes, shelters, hospitals, and places of worship. They added that it was unacceptable.